Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about deep neural networks and how that new machine learning technique can be applied for hyperelasticity. This is an interesting topic. Machine learning is, is used in many different applications these days. Today I will talk about how this applies to hyperelasticity. In fact, it can be done and it's easy to do. Uh, before I talk about all of this, I'm going to introduce a few uh, definitions. So the first word I want to define is regression. So regression is a process of estimation uh, between dependent and independent variables. Fitting a curve to data is a regression type approach, and this is what m-calibration does. Uh, another way to think about it is regression is, is actually a supervised machine learning technique, where we find a regression algorithm that best fits the data in some sense. So that's the, uh, another way to think about it. And the, the word supervised learning is also very commonly used in the literature. Supervised learning is an approach where you use both the, the input values and the desired output to train the machine learning technique, the, the neural network. So when we're talking about calibration of a material model, we actually talk about a supervised learning approach because we use both the strain, as that's the input, and the stress, which is the output, to calibrate the material model. So it's regression and therefore it's a supervised uh, machine learning technique. So here is that formalized a little bit more specifically. In a traditional material model calibration uh, procedure, we have experimental strain, we have experimental stress, and the goal is to find the material parameters such that they match the data. And this is supervised machine learning by definition. And then we take the output of this, which is the parameters and the model itself for the material, together with as the strains that come from a finite element program. And each iteration of the finite element solution, we use the traditional finite elements programming style, in Fortran typically, but it could be other languages too, to calculate the stress update using the results from these inputs. What I want to talk about here is how we can replace this uh, material models here with a deep neural network. So the idea is can we replace the hyperelastic model with a deep neural network? How would that work? Is that a good idea? And uh, a deep neural network has in some sense a very similar functional form to a traditional material model. And I'm picking of course here hyperelasticity as my case study because it's in the results are independent of the time. There is no memory of a hyperelastic material model. So we can get away with a very simple neural network approach. So this is what I want to focus on here. So the first question we need to answer and think about is, of course, how would we actually do this? Uh, how can we represent the stress strain data for a yo hyperelastic model with some type of deep neural network? And uh, to do this, there are different approaches. This is approach number one. So this is method number one for how one can do this. So if you remember, hyperelasticity can be described by this uh, differential equation here, the partial derivatives of free energy with respect to invariance, and then there's some tensor quantities. And I discussed this in my videos on continuum mechanics. Uh, to simplify this, what's commonly done, but not always, but it's commonly uh, to simply reduce uh, or remove the dependence of the second invariant I2 in this equation to get this much shorter and easier equation. And I will do that here too. Simply my, my purpose here is to, to show you and demonstrate concepts. So I don't need to go through all the, the details. I like to simplify things if I can. So I will use this equation here to describe how the tensorial stress depends on the the change in strain energy density with respect to the first invariant and then some tensorial quantities. So really, the input that we have here is the strain and the stress. And the goal of our machine learning, the deep neural network, is to calculate uh, the change in uh, potential energy, free energy, with respect to I1 for a given I1 value. So this is the deep neural network that we're trying to design. If we use approach one, if we can you do this, we can then actually create a full 3D hyperelastic material model that is based on a neural network. I will actually not do this in my example today. Instead, I'm going to simplify it a little bit more. It makes it conceptually easier to follow. So I'm going to simply do a 1D version of this, which is we have a scalar strain and we have a scalar stress, and we want to relate them from, from strain to stress using a deep neural network. This uh, by itself, of course, does not require a hyperelastic material model. We can simply use the uh, experimental strain and stress and then fit uh, 
a neural network to that data set. But we can also use a hyperlasting model for training purposes. And that's what I will do here. So in my example, I, I will go through a deep neural network in which I have figured out beforehand how big the, deep, the neural network needs to be in order to basically match the data that I want to work with. I'm having a, a yo hyperlasting model as my example. And I tried it out a few things. And I came up with this neural network structure that may be needed to capture these results. So what I have here is that I have one input variable strain and one output variable stress. And in the middle, I've hidden layers of 20 uh, perceptrons in each. So two hidden layers, each with 20 perceptrons, which is the term for these circles. And the circle itself has a mathemat mathematical transfer function where we have an input, which is the x value, and w is weight functions. So each of these have a weight associated with them. And then it's a bias value. And the sum of these input times the weights plus the bias is then taken through an activation function to make the predictions of this neural network nonlinear. So this is a nonlinear activation function that manage to choose from. I'll basically just use a RAM function here, which is the most commonly used activation function uh, these days for this, this purpose. Um, we can also write this in a ve vector form and vector matrix form, which is a little easier to understand, I think, instead of having this uh, explicit summation. So the uh, y is the output of the first layer, and that would be the function, the activation function operating on the bias vector time plus a matrix times the input uh, vector. So this is a vector and matrix operation that then we apply the activation function. I'll give us the output of the first layer, which then is fed directly into the second layer. So this is the same variable that goes in here. And we repeat this procedure and then we feed it into the output layer to get the output. And the output here is called y hat, which is really the stress. So that's the stress that we get out of this network. So there's a lot of uh, variables here to describe the performance of this neural network. Um, I have a dense network, as, as you can see. I have connections between all of these perceptrons or these nodes in the network. And uh, that's a, a common way to, to do these things. But the free variables, the variables that describe the output are the, the, the weight functions, the weight factors, and the bias uh, factors. So this needs to be found uh, th from fitting this neural network to training data. And that's uh, how it's typically done. And what I have here on the left is a Python file. It's a complete Python file for training a deep neural network to a yo hyperelastic material model data. And if you look through this file, you can, you can try it yourself and run it to see if, if it makes sense to you. This is based on TensorFlow which is a, a well-known uh, deep learning uh, method uh, or library. And um, I simply have two functions initially. One gives a this yo stress for a given set of parameters. And the second one creates a, a set of training sets. So in this case, I'm, I'm going to train this neural network using 5,000 data points, stress strain data points that I cre create using these functions. And then my network that I will work with is just shown here. And uh, the arguments is that you add one layer with 20 nodes. I use this activation function. And then I add another layer with 20 nodes. It's the same activation function. And then I have an output layer, but I use a linear activation. You need to have a linear activation output for this to work in this case. And then I compile this together with a certain optimizer. That's the mathematical pr procedure that will be used to find the weight factors in the neural network. And then I simply fit the, the model to the training data. And I do it by 500, max 500 iterations in this case. And this is all very standard uh, TensorFlow uh, operations. So virtually all machine learning programs that you will write, not only for hyperelasticity, will have a very similar structure in terms of adding the, the different networks and then how you optimize them. So it's, it's very easy to follow once you've done this a few times. And then the end, the last number of lines here is simply to plot the results. So what I've shown on the right is in uh, blue is the actual closed form uh, mathematical representation of the yo hyperelastic model of stress strain data. The red one, you can see it in some regions, is the machine learning prediction. So the machine learning prediction is reasonably good. 
it has a mean absolute error of 0 0.1 and this is absolute uh, error in uh, in the data and we can improve this prediction substantially by uh, allowing ourselves to have a larger neural network the larger neural network in this case would uh, improve the prediction so this is what i could find it gives a pretty decent prediction but still it's a very small neural network overall there's 20 uh, nodes in each of the two interior hidden layers and um, that all works so this is a, a proof that this actually can be used for uh, hyperelastic predictions the key here though is to look beyond that it's not just does it work but how well does it work so in order to address that i'm going to talk a little bit about floating point operations uh, that's a standard way to describe how fast an algorithm works how many floating point operations are needed to do perform the calculation and if you go back to the equation for the yo hyperelastic model that i based this on it requires about 14 floating point operations uh, in a one-dimensional case and then if you look at our neural network that has 20 uh, nodes in two hidden layers and we look at the number of or the size of these matrices and vectors that we need to operate with if i calculate how many floating point operations it is to go from the strain to stress i get about 900 floating point operations so the point here it works but it will be substantially slower because there's so many more floating point operations needed to perform this uh, this calculation using the neural network i say about at least 50 times slower many times probably be 100 times slower so it's a substantial uh, penalty in terms of runtime and if you put this into finite element calculation you may have thousands and thousands of elements maybe you, you have hundreds of increments so you will be this function will be called substantially a lot right so therefore you can't often afford to have a material model that's based on neural network if it runs 100 times slower for each of these times they will make your simulation front of element simulation run substantially slower too so that's the main downside here um, so to summarize it is easy to create it's easy to train a deep neural network based on the hyperelastic material model you can do it i showed you a little bit how you can do it for a 1d case here and it can be very accurate too the problem is it will run slow it will run much slower than traditional hyperelastic models because the traditional hyperelastic models have such a simple math it's like it doesn't really make sense to use this really powerful neural network idea that is essential for certain problems and try to apply it to this specific issue of a material model that is a hyperelastic material model it's not the right tool for this problem it works but it will be very slow so that's kind of my thinking about this if you have any questions, you can ask them below.